Hello, my name is uh, Chief Plenty Wolf. I come off the Crazy Horse Band of the Ogallala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Agency in South Dakota. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, purifying the air, purifying people, um, so everything comes out in a positive way. You know, we look at life as in, always try to look at life in a positive way because there's too many negativities, too many negative things happening in today's world. And so I try to start off with a, a smudge, you know, if, if uh, even just smudging the room clears that and clears that away. So. Uh, what, what I do is I, I have um, or given assistance from uh, the Creator, you know, uh, with the Spirit, uh, what I call angels that come and help. In my ceremonies, they come and help me. So it's not my choice to do what I do, it's the Creator's choice. And through visions, that's how I was chosen. And so that's why I have to walk in this way of life. I don't have to, but I'd be gone already. You know, so I, you know, it's, it's an honor, but it's also scary. It's, it's, it's really, really hard. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, like, a, like a Ryan said, it's, it's difficult to walk this way of life because you have to really put everyone first, but you always put yourself last and follow the, the Lakota values, the seven Lakota values, the basic values. So I think they moved it up to 12. But the seven is, is, is what the main, main values are. So anyway, at this time, I'm going to say a short prayer for everyone, for everyone's family. Anyway, um, this is a prayer song. And what it means is, uh, Creator, look at me and hear my prayer. Uh, look at me and hear my prayer. This is me. You know, have pity on me and look, you know, listen, to me, listen to my prayers. Make my prayers good and for everybody for all of you and your families, because I know you have families out there and the people that uh, need it, you know, there's people that really need our prayers. So anyway, here, try a hatchet to Allah. Yeah, 
so anyway, um, you know, people ask me why, uh, why uh, this Indian wears a hood, uh, uh, boots and a hat. <laughs> you know, I that's how I grew up. I grew up in uh, Nebraska. I grew up on a part uh, ranch and farm. Uh, after I uh, left the reservation. And my father took us, he went and got a job in the next state over from Pine Ridge Reservation because all of us kids were getting sent to boarding schools. And he wanted to save us. Even though I went to boarding school for a couple summers, he wanted to save us from, from being away, taken away from the family. So he took a job and, and so I started, uh, we grew up in Nebraska. And when you grow up, in a ranch style way, you know, you learn to ride horses and, you know, take care of cattle and, and all that stuff. And when I moved back to the reservation, uh, my grandfather uh, uh, was in charge of uh, the ranch that, that, that we, you know, he hired us, me and my brother and uh, my uncles to take and check the cattle. So we, we rode horse from before the sun came up until after it went down. And of course, when you do that, you want to have fun. So then there comes the rodeo, you know. So we rode rodeo, bulls and bareback horses and saddle bronc. And, and uh, through all this life, you know, different people learn from different experiences, you know. Uh, I had to go through all this, but to begin with, uh, when I was about seven years old, uh, the Creator gave me a dream, a vision, scared the heck out of me. Um, so I went and I told my, uh, my parents, my aunt, aunt and uncle, and we, I remember exactly we were going, we were taking them home, and we were in the car, and I told them, and they said, you're too young, it'll come back to you, someday we'll pray for you. But at that time, my grand, both my grandfathers, you know, my dad's dad and his brother were still alive, and his brother was a UEP man, a medicine man. And so when I told them, they said, pray, and everything will come, it'll be okay, someday it'll come back, you know. So um, I, I did, and then I continued li on life, you know, I, whatever I was supposed to do. I um, grew up, uh, like I said, on the ranch, and, and uh, when I, I, I think it was like uh, my uh, sophomore year in high school, uh, we went to uh, Pine Ridge, and I don't know if anybody knows where Pine Ridge is. curiosity. I just turned 17. And out of curiosity, we walk in there. Two weeks later, we were in the Army. Oh, yeah. 
age 17. I just turned 17. And uh, I was like, okay, well, this is what I signed up for. You know, I guess this is what we're going to go. But after three weeks of waiting to go over there, they finally said, well, you're not going. Our unit's not going because we're starting to pull people out. And uh, I uh, found out later that the uh, 4th Infantry Division, every time they dropped them into the border of Cambodia and Vietnam, they all got wiped out. The whole unit got wiped out. They kept on, but they kept on sending reinforcements in to get wiped out. And that's where I was headed. And so in life, a lot of things that happened, um, I, I came to understand that I had to experience all that. But also in life, I understood why the Creator chose me to be uh, uh, where I'm at today because um, the, the, he, he, basically the Creator saved me from all these things. And when I looked back at everything, I, I got in seven car accidents that I, sh I shouldn't have, you know, they were pretty bad ones. And I also came out of those. I looked at, back at life and everything uh, to us in Lakota spiritual way, uh, seven, four and seven are sacred numbers. And it adds up. It, it, I, I started doing these ceremonies and 28 years later, you know, after I fin went through, finished my 28th year, I, it opened the doors. I under also understood that there's a reason for everything in life, you know. And so I, I looked at, I thought about that and, and, and I said, well, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best to, to, to spread the word of how and what I know and how I feel. Because, uh, like I said, you know, Creator um, chose me to, to lead ceremony. And if you think about it, the 28 years, that's four times seven, four, seven. And when I spoke in, in uh, what was that, at the university, I spoke at... Uh, Sevilla University. Sevilla, you know, uh, there was an auditorium full of young people. And I said, this is beautiful because they need to, to hear this. And uh, when I spoke there, I looked at the, uh, what was it, the, the month or day of the month, and it was the 28th. 28th yeah. yeah. And, and I didn't realize that until I was talking. And then I, I just happened to look at my time because I wanted to see what time it is. And I said, and then the date came up and I was like, hey, it's the 28th. So in life, a lot of things are either added up or multiplied by or seven, four or seven. And so uh, just like our sweat ceremonies, there's four doors. You know, you, we're, we're not, we can't do three because it's not a complete ceremony. You know, you just wasted that, that much time, sort of. Uh, you can't do five because you're asking for more. You're asking for more problems, more issues. And so you don't overdo that. And so, you know, you have to keep it right at four. There's, you know, for us uh, medicine people, we have to use uh, 28 rocks, 28 grandfathers, 28 stones. Because, you know, again, that's four times seven. And that's what we're supposed to use. And, and some of the healing ceremonies, I use 104, but that's what my hochoka, my uh, altar, you know, requires. So anyway, um, in life, you know, I looked back and I said, okay, well, all these make sense all the way up. And uh, uh, I understood that there are certain things that pull, that, that pull you, that want, want you to, and just like you were saying, you want to go back to uh, Arizona, the, de the yeah. desert, because it's pulling you. There's a reason for that, because you're either away from that too long or, or, or um, you need to reconnect where you're supposed to, where you're used to, where you were raised from or, or born from. So you, you, you pray about that and, and then you say, okay, well, I'm going to make it happen. And if it does happen, that, that's your, it's supposed to be that way. Also in, in life, I, I um, have a lot of uh, deja vu. Yeah, and, and deja vu is like, oh yeah, I've been here. You know, I, I've, I've been through this or I see, we were here, you know, we've done this. And uh, that means that uh, we're on the right track. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And so... That's how I look at things, and I was like, okay, good, you know, let's keep praying. But also in life, there's all, you know, there's a certain negativity. Certain people have negativities that I'm supposed to help them with. And there's a reason for that, because that's what they need, the help that they need, the prayers that they need 
to get over this roadblock or this uh, health issue or this family issue or or legal issue, health issue, you know, yeah, I, I help them try to get over that. Um, a lot of people just con solely just concentrate or, or they think that, that whatever problem that they, they come to, they focus on that instead of looking beyond that. Looking beyond with prayer, it's not gonna stay there forever. Somehow, some way it's gonna get resolved and somehow it's gonna be taken care of, you know, whether uh, because it's going to take you and the Creator to do that, to overcome that. Because I look at it as like a speed bump. We come up to a speed bump, and pe people focus on that speed bump because it's, you, you got to go slower or whatever to, to get over that hump. People don't look at the other side where the road is smooth again, you know, it's, because it's not going to stay there. And some people get ca too carried away and say, concentrate on that speed bump, and they, you know, scream and yell and think that everything's over with, you know. And so I explained it to them in that way. You know, so, but back to these values, these Lakota values, the respect, the honor, humility. My grandfather taught me these long time ago when I was little. And uh, uh, in life, all, every time I came to a speed bump or my life thought, you know, it was hopeless or, or, or some kind of a some kind of an issue uh, where it was hard for me to overcome, I, um, one thing that comes back to me is what he told me. Uh, and it only, it's only one of these, you know, a couple of these. But that's all I had to remember, you know. He said, he told me, uh, he said, Tukhtel ya onki hena oyate ki oichaki naha unshicha unwo. He says, wherever you're at, help people and conduct yourself in a humble way and everything will be okay. And when I do that, I get over that. So my, my objective is not just for the young people, but for everyone. If you can follow this, these seven sacred, these seven values, Lakota values, it'll help. And if, if you teach the young people these values, it'll help them in life. And, you know, it, it, it can make a big difference. You know, um, uh, in our way, uh, we don't have a word for I love you. Because in our way, um, uh, what we say is, Chante o chiglanke lo, I hold you in my heart. You know, and, and so in our way, we automatically know from, I've never heard my grandpa, my mom, or my, my father ever tell me, I love you. But because of these values, I automatically knew. And I automatically knew that I was loved. And, that I lo and they knew I loved them. So with these values, you know, it, helps, it helped me through life. And I try to teach that to my children. Uh, my grandchildren. I try to teach that to all the young people. And, and that way it'll, it'll have a positive impact. In, in today's world, in today's society, you know, it, it, it's getting harder and harder. Because, you know, uh, issues like, uh, and we were just talking about, like, you know, what happened, Fukushima. You know, when uh, Ryan and I took me to, the, to, the, to see the beach, uh, Beacon's Beach, uh, yesterday, I went out there and it was beautiful in you know, a surface, kind of a little chilly, but we were out there. And I looked out, I looked at the surfers and I looked beyond the surfers and out there, I don't know, I'm thinking, it's hard to judge distance, but I'm thinking like maybe a thousand yards or beyond that, you know. I looked at it and all of a sudden the water turned red out there. The water turned red and the first thing that came to my mind was uh, Fukushima. And I said, I wonder if people are really getting affected by these surfers, these swimmers, or whatever. And so I, you know, I prayed, and I said, you know, this is all these issues. You know, we have to we have to think about and pray about. And 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 I know that we're guilty of that too. But you know, um, uh, the use of, uh, of of oil, the the petroleum and what it does to the air, you know, what it does to the ground, what it does to, 
if it, you know, and it's constantly, these oil, oil pipelines are constantly breaking and, and uh, it's contaminating our, our water, water system underneath, you know. Water is our first medicine that the Creator gave us. We're all made of water. You know, they say scientifically, what, 60% of our body is water? 83% of our heart, and, our heart and lungs are made of water? You know, um, we, everything needs water. Plants need water to grow, grass needs water, everything. Animals, birds, everything needs good water. And back on my reservation, because of uranium mining, uh, a lot of people are drinking bad water. You know, and, and there's health issues that come, a whole bunch of health issues that come from that. And it's all, it's all over the place. And, and like I said, we're, we're guilty of it because we, we drive vehicles. We fly in, you know, in planes to get from point A to point B faster. You know? I thought about that. I was like, if I go back to horses, man, it's going to take me forever to get there. <laughs> I'll still be coming someplace over there in the Rockies this way. <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 we did it before, you know. But there's also, you know, um, there's also already uh, electric cars. Uh, the Japanese already invented uh, uh, cars that are run off of water. You know, uh, how come we can't convert? Other countries are trying to. Uh, wind and solar energy, how come we can't do it? Why do we have to focus on, on um, digging as much oil from the ground as possible? We Lakota people look at oil as the blood of Ojimakha, Grandmother Earth. That's the blood, the life blood of Grandmother Earth. And we start taking that blood out, that blood, she's going to get weaker and weaker. And then that's where it affects the climate, the air around it. And when it affects the air around it, then these things start to get a little bit more worse, like storms, hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, uh, volcanoes. All these earthquakes, you know, it creates earthquakes. It disturbs Ochimakha. So even though, uh, you know, it doesn't happen, and, and, and you, you, everybody should be used to it here by the earthquakes, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it, there's a reason for that, you know. There's a reason for uh, uh, all these, uh, it's, some of it's natural, but a lot of it's man-made. And I worry, I think about the future of our children and our grandchildren and their children. Because the way I saw it and the way that, that, that I feel is that within 50 years, we're going to self-destruct. But the other day, somebody said it's going to start uh, in 2022. And I was thinking about 2022, that's only a couple years, down, you know, that's only three, four years down the road. I mean, that's quick. And in my lifetime, I remember that when I grew up, uh, my grandpa raised us, when, when me and my brother, when we were little. We used to live in a log cabin. And uh, it took, uh, I think it was like maybe a quarter of a mile. We had to go downhill and into the woods, and there was a creek called Whitehorse Creek. And we used to take our buckets and, and, and bring the water, fill those buckets up, you know, they're so big. Fill those buckets up, and we used to head back up. Because my grandpa was too old, I mean, he barely walked. So we chopped wood, but we, we also went after our, our drinking water, you know. 
and and so a cooking water too, you know. And so we we we'd grab that and we take off. My brother was you know two years younger than I was, and uh, by the time we got home, we only had like half a bucket each. But you know, still you know we we got it up there, you know, and it was good water. I mean, you know, we 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 drank that water. It came from a, a spring about four four or five miles up the up the river up the creek. Nowadays, uh, we have we have our uh, one of our sacred ceremonies, a Sundance ceremony, right beside Whitehorse Creek. And when you look at that water, you don't even touch it, because that's how. And plus, more people live there through there. And 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 uh, that's the way it is all over the place. Uh, we knew that Missouri was already contaminated, but we're trying to save as much of it as we can. And that's where Standing Rock came in. Uh, when the Keystone XL pipeline was first being planned uh, and started to be built, uh, I was inside of a ceremony and I told uh, the people that came and, and joined me, I said, you know, if they continue and if they get hit in the, the, into Nebraska, I said, I'm going to uh, load my Chanupa, well, it's, a, it's a pipe that I pray with, a connection to the Creator, and the Eagle Staff. And I'm going to stand in front of that Keystone Nextel pipeline and pray, and pray that it doesn't go through. Well, after that ceremony, a couple of weeks later, it stopped. They didn't, they, you know, they weren't going to, they stopped it. So I was like, great, you know. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, the uh, next thing that came up was uh, uh, Standing Rock, the dapple, you know, uh, the pipeline up there. And I was like, uh, you know, I made a commitment to do this, but that was Keystone XL, and this is a different pipeline, so I guess I don't have to go. You know, that's what I was thinking. You know, I was, I was trying to make an excuse, but um, what happened was it kept on pulling at me. You know, just like what I we we talked about. You know, it just kept on pulling at me. Like, there's a I needed to be there, but at the time. I couldn't be there because I didn't have no way. I didn't have no funds. I, I, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, I have a vehicle, but I, you know, I don't have any money. I, I can't make it up there, you know. So that was another excuse that I had, you know. I was like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta do this and do that. But it kept on pulling at me, and I was like, I, I need to be there for some reason. I need to be there. What we were, what these young people were uh, focusing on was to save. The Missouri from getting any more contamination. At first, when it first started, it was above Bismarck, but because of the city, because they didn't want their water contaminated, they voted to move it further south, uh, right above Standing Rock. And so the pipeline was supposed to go through there. And that's what they were a guaranteed break. Because I asked one of them, and I think he was, uh, what do you call it, a, a person being sent in to try to convert people into supporting the oil company. And I, uh, what do you call them, trolls? Lobbyists. Yeah, lobbyists. lobbyists or whatever. And I was talking to him, and uh, it didn't take me long to figure out, you know, this infiltrator, you know. Because of the question, why don't you support oil? How come you, you know, and I was like, why is he asking that? He suppose he's in our camp, you know. But they were all over, I guess. And um, uh, he said that, uh, he told me, he said uh, that he used to, uh, and this is his story, he used to work on pipelines. So I'm like, uh, okay. I said, how good are these pipelines? You know, he says, they're pretty good. So I'm like, okay, well, um, how many years can you guarantee for it not to break? They're, they average about 20 years, he said. About 20 years, they, 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 that's what they uh, uh, estimated it at. So I was like, but, he said, they can break in nine. You know, nine, ten years. So I, was like, so I looked at him and I was like, so you're saying that it's a guaranteed break. Whether it's 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it's a guaranteed break. And he said, yeah, it'll break. So sooner or later, that pipeline's gonna break. It's guaranteed contamination. And if you look at the map where it's coming through above Standing Rock, if it breaks through further, a little further down, we've got Oglala Aquifer. It's the biggest aquifer in the United States. And that serves water for a lot of people. 
So at the beginning, these young people were worried about their contamination on Standing Rock. But when I got there, I was like, wait a minute, this is not just for the people they're, they're of Standing Rock, it affects all the people down the Missouri. It affects all the people that depend on the Gulala Aquifer. And not only are, you have to think about uh, um, uh, not just the people, but all the wildlife and all the birds and all the fish that are in that water, all the plants, all the medicine plants that are grow along that water and away from that water because a lot of them are getting piped out. And then I, I thought about Miniwichoni as a project that we pipe our water from the Missouri River all the way across, uh, halfway across the uh, South Dakota to Pine Ridge, and that's our drinking water. And even that, they have to uh, put uh, chlorine in it to purify it more because somehow it got contaminated. So then I thought about that and I was like, and then, okay, it went beyond that. So now it affects the farmers and the ranchers. Farmers have to go crops with water and they have to put it to market. The ranchers have to raise cattle, uh, sheep or whatever, and, and to put it into market. And if they can't do that, then it affects the consumers. And then it affects, then it goes into food, sh food shortage and it affects everybody and spreads and keeps on going. So I realized that this isn't just for Standing Rock, it's, it, it's for everybody that uses that Missouri on both sides. And then it affects, it goes further out. And then I said, you know what? Other countries are going through the same thing. And so it's affecting the whole world. And so this water, this life, the, the life that, that, that we have to, that, the, that medicine that we have to have is, is, is getting jeopardized every single day. Because th then thoughts like, when I, when I was thinking a long time ago, we used to fish in this uh, river, it's a pretty wide river, called the White River. And it came through Nebraska and into South Dakota and kept on winding around. And we used to catch catfish about that big, you know, big ones. And I, my grandpa used to do that. Now it's dry. It's been dry for a couple decades. It's just, at first it was muddy and then now it's that the only time it fills up is the rainy season. You know, um, but there used to be, it used to be rushing river. But because it gets blocked off and because ranchers said, okay, well, I need this water, so I'm gonna just dam it off. And it kept on going. By the time it got to us, there's nothing, you know? So these things like that, it affects, it affects uh, the, the, the livelihood of everyone, you know? Um, with all these, these uh, issues that come up, and I know there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of other problems. There's health issues. You know, Monsanto has no good for our, you know, the food. It's either food, the air, or, or, or you know, the, um, uh, the water. And and when when it affects us in that way, you know, um, what are we gonna? What are our kids gonna do? What are their their our grandchildren are gonna do? You know, how are they gonna survive? Do we, you know, do we think about that? Do, do these oil companies think about it? No, they don't. They just think about that dollar. But because society around this world made it so that we depend on the money, that, that, that dollar, that money, it can't change that. You know, it, I can't go to a store and get some food because, without that money, you know. Uh, I can ask for it, but they're not gonna give it to me because they're thinking about that money. You know, so if society has made it so we ha we're dependent on it. And it's throughout this world. And, and when they, they're de dependent on it, and these corporations are so big that now they run the government, the governments. And so what I'm saying is that I've been trying to, and, 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 and I think I'm making a little bit of progress, I'm trying to, spread the word that the seventh generation, the seventh generation, which is uh, our young people, the young people that are up at Standing Rock. Uh, when I was young, they, they explained to me that the seventh generation is our, our indigenous people that are coming up the next, in the next couple of generations, but back then. Now we're there, seventh generation's here. When I was up at Standing Rock, I realized that the seventh generation 
is all the people in that age category now around this world. They're, they need our support. They need, and it's going to take more than just support, it's going to need our help. They're, they're the ones that are going to save humanity. But they need help. And just like, it's the same thing, just like that gun control thing, where all these high school students or all these school students walked off and, and, and protested, you know, not only in the state capitol, but in Washington. You know, they got together and they told everybody, you know, it's our turn to vote. We're going to make changes. It's the same thing with the seventh generation. They're the same people, the age group. They're going to make changes and they need our support. Because we need to make positive we need to make positive decisions in how this earth is going to keep going. And we're going to prolong it. Eventually, Unji Makha, Grandmother Earth, is going to purify itself. You know, it's naturally going to purify itself. But we don't have to make it man-made sooner. You know, we don't have to make it next week. You know, we can prolong it and make changes. And so... This one, I'll never forget. They showed me the river way down below, and they said, look how, look how far it went down. So I, was, I looked at that. And then I looked to the left in the distance, there was two nuclear power plants running. And that's another thing we have to get rid of. You know? And granted, that's power, but it goes back to, if man can get power from the sun, solar, wind, how come we don't do that? You know, why, why, don't, why can't we do that to think about our, our children and our grandchildren, our future? We, you know, we, we, we can't be so selfish just, just to think about ourselves now, but just because we're okay, you know? We have to think ahead, you know? We all are in this together. What did they say? We're all in the, we're all in the same boat, you know? It, it, it just isn't certain groups of people or races or ages or whatever. It, it, we're all in that same, we're all, we only have one earth, you know? And so we have to think about that and we have to work in a positive way where we spread this word and support the seventh generation so they can make changes in the government, make changes in energy, make changes in a good way of life, you know? Instead of being violent and everything being negative, you know, the, I know there's different issues all over the world, but there's one thing that, 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 that I think about is you think beyond that. How are we going to save ourselves from self-destruction? Uh, how are we going to, what, what we have to think about everybody, not just ourselves, but the ones that can't speak for themselves, the four legged the ones that fly, the, one, the fish that, you know, the little grass that grows up, plants, these plants. Plants are alive, they listen, they hear you. Trees are alive, everything's alive. Everything that grows has a, what we call a nahi, a spirit. When it grows, even a blade of grass has a nahi, a spirit, and it needs water to grow. You know, so, you know, you think about all this, even air, air moves, air has a spirit. Everything around us, spirit is within us, creator is in with us, creator is in with everything that grows. We're all in this as one.
because we have that connection, that connection. The Lakota people were sent, uh, the white buffalo calf woman, to teach us seven sacred ceremonies. There you go again, seven sacred ceremonies. When you go through these seven sacred ceremonies, it's the direct connect because we were having a hard time and because we were facing extinction. Sent this person down, this young woman, white buffalo calf woman, to show us and brought us the pipe, the chinupa. So we have that connection. They said, anytime you have a hard time, when she finished teaching us this and before she left, she says, anytime where people have a hard time, you put this together and you pray. It's a direct connection to the Creator. It's kind of hard to explain because you have to see that and experience it in order for it for you to believe it. You know, there's a lot of things out there that, that uh, or it could be in here too, that, that connect with you. You know, the, the angels, what I call them, spirits. You know, they come, they help in ceremony, you know. And, and even, it's, it's, like, it's like you believe in really a person that always tells the truth and they, so one day they tell you, I've seen a flying saucer just the other day and it looked like this and like that. And I was like, okay, well, I believe you. Yeah, I believe you see all that. But in the back of your mind, you're going to have that little bitty doubt because you didn't see it yourself. There's a lot of things that, that I experienced and a lot of things that, uh, that I went through. A lot of ceremonies, a lot of spirit helpers, a lot of, a lot of pr answered prayers, I, sh I should say, that only the Creator can do. And, and, and whether, it, I can explain it over and over, but unless you go through it, then you'll understand. And some of you probably already do. You know, you already believe that, that uh, there's a higher power you know, in prayer. Because sooner or later, we, we need them. Everybody needs them. You know, sooner or later, there's something that happens in life, in your life, whether it's your family or something that's connected to you that, or somebody asks for it, pray for me. You're gonna need that prayer. And it's good to know that the Creator is always there because part of that creation is within us. You know, that's why the cycle of life, you understand that. It's really hard to let people go when it's their time to go. It's really hard. But once you understand that cycle of life, our body comes from Earth. Our body goes back to Earth. Our spirit takes off, hits that Milky Way and heads south. But that's how we believe in the Lakota Way, the Milky Way. It's called the, uh, the Nari Chanku, the spirit road. Gets up there and takes off. Pray, pray for a good journey. Be happy for them because we're gonna be there. It's inevitable, everybody's gonna be there eventually. We just have a pl different um, train ride, plane ride, whatever you wanna call it. It's booked for us, wherever. So you always take that and live every day as best you can, as positive as you can in prayer and things will go good for you. But we've got a big problem, We, you know, I could say, well, we have this issue about guns, or we have this issue about a cancer, or we have this issue about uh, uh, some kind of health issue or, or environmental issue. But overall, we got to think in the big picture, okay, the environmental issue, yeah, climate change. It's quick. It's, it's happening, you know, if you, even the Inuits are from Alaska, they know that the glaciers are changing, they're melting faster. There's studies done, the, the, the ice caps used to be really big, now they're shrinking. You know, the oceans are rising because of that. Climate change, axis of the earth is t tilting a little bit, we don't notice it, but it did. That's why, why do you think these storms go further south? You know, why, why do you think we were in Colorado, we, we haven't had a winter. It snowed a couple times, two or three inches, but shoot, we used to have blizzards. We used to have feet, feet of snow. It hasn't come in a couple of years, two or three years. It's changing. But just because I, I can go down to the gas station or grocery store and, oh, they still got food, I've, I've seen. I've seen one time that it was so bad of a blizzard, went to the store to pick up bread and all the, all the shelves were empty because the trucks couldn't come in. And I started to think, what happens if this happens all over the place? 
what are people going to do? Do they know, know how to uh, look at uh, what grows and what to eat, how to fish, how even to, to, to kill game, you know? You know, we, we pray, you know, every time we take a deer's life, we pray. We pray for that spirit because it's saving us. Yeah. And so, you know, when something like that happens, everybody, everybody goes in chaos. You know, everybody's worried, everybody's frantic, everybody's saying, well, well you know, go, how are we going to make it down to the next grocery store? Well, what do you think if this grocery store is going to the same thing? Well, the next grocery store is going to be the same thing. Why go all the way there to find out? You know, but things like that, you know, you think about. And like I said, Standing Rock brought the seventh generation, not just from there, not just from across the United States, but from around the world, it brought them together. It's, a, it, 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 it's making them look at reality. And they're the ones that are changing the, the, the they're, 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 what they see for young people is really great because nobody else thinks about it. You know, they're the ones that are going to make the difference. And so that's why, you know, I hope that that people, you know, spread this word and, and keep on spreading this word all over. And I'm going to do my best because, you know, like I said, society made it where it takes money. You know, I, and I, I, you know, I even need somehow to raise money to get to these countries, you know. One at a time, not just think about it. Well, okay, what's the, where's the next worst place, you know? But it's happening all over, you know? Digging up on uh, uh, in Africa, in South America, Central America, just because of what they can get to sell. How to make that money. It's all over the world. How to, you know, when I was talking at that university, they gave me a bottle of water, and I was like, look, long time ago, when I was young, I never thought I'd buy water. I never bought, you know, sooner, you know, and, and they sell air too, you know. And so if we have to pay for both, then what else? I mean, and, and now we can't even collect rainwater. We used to do that. My grandpa used to, we used to have big barrels. Rainwater came in there, we'd clean off the top, and we'd drink that, you know. That was our cooking and drinking water, you know, besides the creek. but. Nowadays, you can't do that because it's against law. You can go to jail for doing that, you know. So, so things like that, you know, what, what else are they going to come up to, to sell, you know? What else are they going to take away from us? What else, you know? But society made it, so we have to buy these things. We have to. Until the seventh generation makes that change to solar, wind, government, to think about their future, you know. Anyway. That Okay, the, the things that I uh, wanted to mention also was that um, uh, over at Standing Rock there was a, a big old large teepee that was built, a ceremonial teepee, a meeting place, which hadn't been done in over 150 years. It was called the Ocheti Shakoi. And what it is, is it's uh, all the seven council fires of the, what they call us, the French call us the Sioux, Sioux Nation, the Great Sioux Nation, uh, have come together. At, at the last time that that happened was over 150 years ago. It opened the doors to the treaties uh, that were made with the United States. 
and it goes beyond that. It can go up uh, through the United Nations and past to the rest of the world. And this is where it's kind of difficult because they say we're sovereign, but we're not really sovereign because each tribe has the, what we call the BIA uh, implemented into these tribes, uh, BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs. And the Bureau of Indian Affairs is run by the government. So whatever happens in tribal business, the BIA takes care of it. They call us sovereign, but we're not sovereign because we cannot control our own destiny. And so it is important when we open the doors to those treaties to go beyond and ask for help from, from the rest of the world um, in, any which, in any which way we can because um, we have to be self-sufficient in order to grow, in order to be um, uh, uh, among the world. We, they call us a, a separate nation, but we're not really separate nation when we're still controlled by the U.S. government. So that is what is very important to our people. And we need the outside help in order to recognize that and to, to support us and to support the, the, um, the Naja, the leadership of the Ocheti Shakoi. And that's one of the biggest things that uh, was accomplished, that, uh, that, that was um, um, the, the biggest thing that ever happened uh, coming out of Standing Rock. Okay, and then another thing too is when Standing Rock happened and the call went out because of the oil, we had to stop that oil uh, pipeline, um, as word spread, and that's at, for, at the beginning it spread slowly, but then it, it started to happen more quickly, quickly. And then all of a sudden, we had people from all over the all over the country, all over Turtle Island, different tribes coming in one after another. We did ceremonies to to welcome them in, and as we did those ceremonies, more and more tribes came in from other countries: Canada, Mexico, South America, Alaska. They all started to come in, and all of a sudden, people from around the world started to come in. The young young people kind of came in to to support and to, to, to be with us uh, uh, with all the issues that we were facing and trying to stop that, uh, that pipeline. That pipeline is uh, in the Lakota, the prophecy long time ago, um, it was told that uh, the, the pipeline is a black snake and the black snake will come and it will cross the country. And there is other black snakes, but that main black snake that, that they were talking about at, at Standing Rock was, was coming. And so the prophecy was fulfilled, but other prophecies were also fulfilled because uh, they said someday a lot of, all, the, all the people will come together, and which, which is happening, and it's still happening now. I believe that all, all people of all age, all races will come together uh, under the, the tree of life. And, uh, and I believe that that is going to happen, and that's going to happen real soon. Uh, in prayer, that is how powerful that is. And then the message is that I have received that prayer has to be number one. So anyway, that's how important that we stop that black snake. And, and so far, it's still running, but like I said, it's, it's, uh, they're having issues with it. They did everything illegal, so now hopefully they can shut it off and uh, look at all our issues. Because so far in history, all our lands have been taken and uh, the, all our treaties haven't been kept. Um, they've they've uh, ignored them. They've, they've, they've tried to, to, to give us uh, so much money for our sacred Black Hills right in South Dakota. But we refuse it because that is our sacred land and we need to be there. And with the help of the rest of the na uh, rest of the world, uh, you know, maybe that's a possibility in your future. I know that that was an issue when I first knew how to talk. Uh, when I was young, I had heard about that all my life. And all my life, I never thought that I would have to go and try to protect that water, that, that sacred medicine. 
And when it came to, um, I, you know, I was, uh, I couldn't believe it. I, you know, it happened in my lifetime, which things happen for a reason. And it goes back to numbers. Our, our sacred numbers are four and seven. Four and seven, like everything else, are the four directions of uh, our, where we're at. The four directions. The seven covers the, 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 the spirits and then uh, Grandmother Earth here and then uh, the great spirit, the great mystery. So there's seven right there. And because of Standing Rock, a lot of these people around the world are, are, are noticing and waking up to what the real issues are. It's not being ignored anymore. And a lot of things will have to happen um, together in order for us to work towards the positive. And in that, we have to pray towards the positive. Like I said, uh, prayer is number one. Uh, we all have to make stronger prayers. If we all pray in around this world of all the th issues that are going on, the negativity, could, we could turn that to positivity. We can uh, make this a world to last a lot longer for our children, grandchildren, and their children. You know, yeah, but uh, we don't have much time and. And we need everybody's help. We need I know that uh, lately I've been, uh, before I came this way, I was pulled towards uh, Canada because one of the things that came out of Canada was that uh, there was a lot of uh, suicides with young people. And uh, there were, I heard there were ages uh, 10, 11, 12 years old. And in my hometown, there, has, uh, it, there was like an epidemic of, of suicides. Um, a couple of nephews of mine uh, committed suicide in the last two years. And so the, the organization that we're with, we're trying to find a way to help these young people come back to our culture, come back to uh, maybe ceremony in a way where we can help them from... Uh, uh, committing suicide. And I know it's uh, uh, a problem all over the world, and maybe that's another reason why we need to um, uh, get out there and, and do more cer uh, ceremonies or even uh, talk, just talk to the young people. All indigenous people around this world were um, uh, sort of um, put here by Creator to protect and watch over the uh, what we call Grandmother Earth. And that protection and, and cultures around this world is also jeopardized by big corporations and governments because they keep on taking and taking. And when that happens, um, we're not strong enough to 
to, to defend uh, or protect what is in our area. And we need the people of this world to come together and support in that way. And so there is a voice out there where we can make changes in the government, make changes in, in the policies concerning um, what we can do to uh, better the earth instead of uh, uh, to going through fossil fuels or uh, more timber or, or everything that that is needed from the ground is taken taken until it is, is all it's going to be all gone. You know, a lot of the waters, uh, rivers are getting polluted, and we need to put a stop to that because if we don't, then we uh, we need everybody's help, and and we 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 can't do it alone. That's why we're reaching out, and that's why we're trying to spread this message. And, and, and stay in prayer and, and work together in that way. We, we need everyone's help to focus on this positivity. You know, too much bad things are happening. Too many, too many are close, that much close to nuclear war. There is, there is too much destruction of Ojimakha, Grandmother Earth. So we need to make that change. We all need to start to come together. You know, I really appreciate Daku, uh, and uh, um, I, I really pray for all of you out there. Thank you.